Hello, geography students. This is Ms. Wildy. This will be our video lecture over Chapter 7, Religion. I strongly encourage you to also study the chart we did or used um, and filled out during student presentations over the religion at the beginning of the unit, as well as the Five Pillars of Islam worksheet, the um, Arabic words for faith, prayer, charity, fasting, and pilgrimage are on the um, test, so you need to review those. Those are not on this video lecture. Otherwise, um, as always, I recommend you have your study guide out, um, jot down any notes you want to make or, or questions you want to ask for me in class, and, um, and just kind of follow along as you, as you see for review of the chapter. The field note um, discusses um, the former Soviet republics and the USSR and communism in general in terms of religion, um, with the emphasis that religion plays a huge role in culture. Um, so oftentimes governments use that either to their advantage or to get rid of it, as in the case with, um, with the former Soviet Republic or USSR. Um, the U Soviet Union had an official policy of atheism, um, or rather they would rather you not practice any religion at all. Um, they did this for several reasons. They, uh, ultimately, they wanted you, as a citizen of the USSR, to put more emphasis on um, or allegiance to the government rather than your religion. They also wanted to reduce the um, diversity um, and conflicts related to that diversity among those republics. So they felt if there was no religion practice, there would not be the conflict between those, those ethnic groups or those um, culture groups, and that would reduce conflict. Um, and, and in turn, they, there were a lot of churches and mosques that were left abandoned during the communist rule. When communism ended, of course, the freedom of religion was returned. Um, there's still a huge percentage of atheists or non-practicing um, people within the, uh, within the former Soviet republics um, because of the effect of that government system. Um, specifically, they talk about Azer Azer Azerbaijan and um, Armenia, which um, the Muslim and Christian still caused conflict, even though they were supposed to be um, atheist only. And after the Soviet Union dis was dissolved, that conflict kind of created more problems even, even with that. So fundamentally, the, um, the question of what religion is, is it's a system of beliefs and practices um, that um, attempt to order life in terms of culturally perceived priorities. That's a um, textbook um, definition, but it's um, the practices, rituals, things that people do in terms of, of understanding what, um, what they're supposed to do within the society. And we'll talk about secularism in just a little bit in terms of what that role has played. But across all religions, ritual and prayer are common. Um, the act of what happens when someone dies is seen on the landscape. Um, the um, cultural landscape reflects those traditions, those rituals. Um, this is a picture of a Hindu crematorium in, in Kenya. So again, we're talking about um, the diffusion of the religion into other places, because Hinduism began in, in South Asia or India. But um, because it has been diffused into other places, you will find the, the effects of that religion in terms of the landscape in other places, hence the crematorium. And we'll talk more about this in, in, in a little bit. But the effects of religion on the landscape is a huge part of this chapter. So please you know, be thinking about that in terms of free response questions. Um, this is another example of the religion in terms of history and culture. This is Antwerp, Belgium, and of course the, um, um, this is a strong Catholic, um, um, so, the, so the Catholic presence in terms of cathedrals in the landscape is obvious as well. So we're going to talk about where religions started, major religions of the world where they started, and how they diffused. Um, few key terms beforehand. Monotheistic means the belief in one god. Polytheistic means the belief in more than one god. Um, and animist religions believe that there are spirits that inhabit um, inanimate objects, like natural things like trees or rocks or even possibly animals, and those spirits should be revered. 
There's also two classifications of religions, ethnic and universalizing. Ethnic religions tend to have adherents who are born into the faith. Um, they tend to be homogenous populations. They are not seeking converts. They just continue to have children that are brought up in that religion, and that's how it continues on. Whereas universalizing religions, of course, have people that are born into it and are learned in the faith that way but they also actively seek converts. And because of that, they're probably are going to have more of a heterogeneous population um, because they have people from all different um, races, ethnicities, and so forth. Um, this is a great map to make sure you feel, feel familiar with. Major religions of the world. The key to the, to the left is something you need to kind of pay attention to. Um, and we also had that video about the diffusion of religion. Um, that I put up. It was about a two-minute video, and that is on my website if you need to look at it. But specifically, it's very clear that the universalizing religions are going to be um, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, even though they are not um, um, evangelical universalizing, and then the ethnic religions are going to be Judaism, Hinduism, Confucianism, so to speak. Um, these are the hearths. Very important that you look over this. Um, uh, specifically, the river valleys are important. Yellow River would be significant for Chinese philosophy, like Confucianism, Taoism, so forth. Indus River Valley for the Indian religion, like Hinduism and then later Buddhism. Um, the Tigris and Euphrates led to the um, um, eastern shores of the Mediterranean, which would be Judaism, and then later on Christianity and Islam. And then the Nile Valley, or the northern shores of the Mediterranean, would be like the Greek philosophy, which also has connections with Islam and Christianity. So that is a really good um, chart to look at and kind of kind of familiarize yourself with before the test. So we're going to start with the hearth of South Asia. Hinduism is the oldest religion that's still practiced today. Um, started in the Indus River Valley about 4,000 years ago, at least. We don't know exactly who. There was no, no clear founder. Um, they do have a strong emphasis on meditation, ritual bathing, karma, the idea that you have um, a punishment or reward for doing your dharma or your, your moral duty, and in turn you are reincarnated in the next life um, into another caste, possibly, or another... Um, being based on those punishments or rewards from your actions in the past life. The Vedas would be the sacred text. The Ganges River is, is a sacred site, um, and it diffused throughout South Asia and even a little bit into Southeast Asia, although Buddhism went much further. Um, ahimsa is a, is a term um, meaning nonviolence, and this is a strong concept not only in Hinduism but also in Buddhism and Jainism. Um, which is another religion of South Asia. And the cultural um, or social manifestation of Hinduism is in the caste system with the idea that you have people at the top versus the untouchables at the bottom. And again, if you have the belief that you are being punished from a, from a past life, then being part of the untouchable caste sort of makes sense. Um, the caste system has been outlawed. However, because it's such a part of the culture as well, it's, it's hard to sort of... Um, get rid of that as quickly as just making it not part of the laws. Um, this is a Hindu temple in, in Cambodia called Angkor Wat to show the diffusion of Hinduism into Southeast Asia. Um, it is now more Buddhist than anything, but it was a Hindu temple to show that diffusion. And this is another res resource maps for not only Hinduism, but also Buddhism in the green, Christianity in the purple, and Islam in the red. So for Buddhism, again, it's splintered from Hinduism about 2,500 years ago. Um, uh, Siddhartha Gautama was a was a Indian prince from the Ganges River area, and he was trying to get away from the caste system. He felt it was it was wrong, and he um, left all of his of his worldly wants and desires and everything and and went in search of the end of the end of suffering and he reached nirvana which is enlightenment and that's when he became known as buddha he reached enlightenment or nirvana under the bodhi tree so the bodhi tree is very significant for buddhists um, stupas and shrines are also very important because meditation is important for buddhism um, and we'll talk more about those sacred sites in just a little bit Finally, with diffusion, again, it started in South Asia, but it has, it has become much more a part of religion, of the religion of Southeast and East Asia. 
Um, and we'll talk about Japan specifically where they have a combination of Buddhism and Shintoism in there. And these are some stupas. Um, they're used for meditation and prayer as well as um, sometimes they are put above burial um, tombs. Again, with our map, please remember those diffusion routes. <clears throat> That's important part of this chapter. For, for Buddhism, um, again, I just mentioned Japan has a mixture in terms of the religion of Buddhism and Shintoism. Um, and this is a Shinto shrine, shrine in Kyoto. So if the shrine would be very much a part of Buddhism, um, whereas you are oftentimes praying to or meditating to your ancestors, which is part of that Shintoism. All right, so from the next river valley, the Wenghe or Yellow River Valley, we have our um, Chinese um, um, philosophies or religions. And actually, Taoism um, came from Confucianism, or it came after Confucianism. But we're going to start with Taoism. It originated in China more than 2,500 years ago. Oneness of humanity and nature. Um, Lao Tzu is the founder of it. Sacred text is Book of the Way. Um, social manifestation is feng shui, that idea that you have a, an energy flow, and so the placement of furniture and the placement of yourselves within a room or within a place is going to have a, an effect on that energy flow. And of course, it diffused throughout East Asia. Confucianism also in China. Confucius was the founder. The Analects or Confucian classics are the sacred texts. Emphasis on philosophy, government, education. Um, the relationships are central. Please look at that chart again, as I said, for more information about that. And again, it diffused throughout China and other parts of East Asia and Southeast Asia. And one last thing with Confucianism is that it can be debatable as whether it's a religion or philosophy since it has no emphasis on a god or afterlife. Um, and that's why the Chinese government allows for Confucian ideas within its communist government. From the Eastern Mediterranean, we're going to start with Judaism, um, originated in um, Southwest Asia about 4,000 years ago. First major monotheistic religion that's still practiced today. Uh, well, maybe, possibly. Hinduism is, is um, debatable about whether it is monotheistic or polytheistic. But... Um, um, it is certainly a major monotheistic religion of the world. Abraham is a central um, figure and founder of it. Torah is the sacred text. Um, Jerusalem, the Western Wall, is a sacred site for it. We'll look more at that in just a second. Um, Zionism is a good term, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in context, but Zionism is the idea that Jews should not be absorbed into other cultures or other societies. So it led to the creation of Israel. It diffused into most of Europe, um, after the diaspora, where Jewish people were, were forced to leave Jerusalem or Israel. Um, and then after World War II and the Holocaust, many Jews came to North America as well. This is a picture of the Western Wall. Um, specifically, this is the Western Wall. The Dome of the Rock we'll talk about in just a little bit, and that's also in Jerusalem. Um, this is a Jewish neighborhood in Prague, Czech Republic. So again, this is relating to the diffusion of Judaism throughout Europe. Um, also from the heart of the Eastern Mediterranean is Christianity. It came about as a result of um, the death of Jesus. Um, Christians believe that, that Jesus was the Son of God, so the Messiah, in other words, and so Judaism... Um, did not. Christianity had to become its own religion. Sacred, sacred text is the Bible. Um, the sacred site is Jerusalem as well as Bethlehem where Jesus was born. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the split in the church. Um, there was one in 1054 between Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholic and then later on in the 1400s and 1500s the Protestant Reformation occurred which I'll talk about in just a second. This is the most widespread re religion in the world, um, and again, that video we watched is going to show you a whole lot about that. Um, but it diffused throughout, um, certainly Jerusalem where it started, but also throughout Europe and with colonization the rest of the world. And here's another map. You see the purple is the, is the Christianity. Um, the first split in Christianity happened in 1054 over the, um, they could not agree about um, whether idols or um, icons should be used within the churches. Um, Roman Catholics said no, Eastern Orthodox said yes. Today they would look very similar in terms of both having icons or idols within the church, but this was that first split in 1054. 
And then we talked about the Protestant Reformation, which, ha which happened later on in, in about the 1500s. Um, with the corruption in the Catholic Church, they were the selling of indulgences was um, um, a big deal, and and um, there was marriage of priests, um, lots of lots of of um, problems happening, and people seeing that this is not where Christianity had was the focus or had been from the foundation it had changed drastically, and so there was something called the Protestant Reformation where people protested the Catholic Church and started their own Christian religions, like Lutheranism, Anglicanism, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, and so forth. Um, um, and they had less emphasis on a pope, um, less emphasis on the priests doing something. It was more about the personal relationship between God and, the, and Christians. Um, and this is a picture of Swi a map of Switzerland with the Catholic and Protestant, as well as mixed um, and you can see not the the canton boundary, <clears throat> which are more like sort of um, provinces or states within the country. <coughs> Excuse me, and how um, you can see the religious boundaries there. <clears throat> Third religion from the Eastern Mediterranean hearth would be Islam, and that that started. <coughs> Excuse me, when Muhammad was born about 1500 years ago. Um, please again refer to your Five Pillars of Islam worksheet where we compare Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. Um, but the sacred text would be Quran, Muhammad would be the founder, Mecca would be a um, major, major sacred site, we'll talk about Hajj in just a second. Medina is where um, Muhammad fled to and later died, and Jerusalem is also a sacred site for the Dome of the Rock. Um, the two sects of Judaism, I'm sorry, of Islam, are Sunni and Shia. Um, majority of um, Muslims are the, of the Sunni sect, <coughs> whereas in Iran, they are a majority Shia. Um, they split because they could not decide who should be the next leader of the um, Islamic faith after Muhammad, after his death, but later after his grandson Ali's death. So um, um, Sunni said it could be anyone that had been well taught by Muhammad or learned in the, in the Muslim faith. Shia said it had to be a direct descendant of Muhammad. And so they have differences there. They diffused across the Arabian Peninsula, across North Africa, into Spain, and also east into Southeast Asia. <coughs> and here's again the map. In, in this case, we're looking at... Um, the red for Islam. And Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. <coughs> All right, one key uh, term related to Islam would be a minaret. It's a tower that is um, attached to most mosques where Muslims are called to prayer. And again, again, this would be an obvious um, effect on the landscape of Islam. Um, and then more with the diffusion, this is a mosque in Paris, and we did talk about um, <coughs> the rules of secularism related to um, the conflict between Muslims and Christians in, in France. <coughs> 